Okay, so the thing about the Beatles is they managed to state their collective frame of mind when they were recording an album for that particular period in their history through their actual album titles. It's very interesting because if you look at it, the very first album is called Please Please Me. Uh, I must also make, make the uh, mention that this is, these are the British albums, not the valorized American albums. So these are the actual albums that the Beatles released in their earlier years as well, which are not chopped to pieces by the American corporate polygraph. Anyway, so you have their first album called Please Please Me. And at that point, they're just a boy band, and they're young, they just want to get laid and have some fun. And so please, please me, like, uh, please, please me like I please you, you know, and it's a, a welcome invitation to, you know, a life together having fun. And then they get to their second album. They've made it in England by now. And what they're trying to do now is break into America. And so what they do is the second album has them now, you know, suit and tie kind of thing, or that's the Beatles suits, you know, not the conventional suit and tie. And so this one is titled Meet the Beatles. It's a little bit more formal. Not as free and loose and easy as uh, the Please Please Me album as far as the psychology behind it. Then we get to the third album, which is The Hard Day's Night, which of course also is a movie. Uh, and it's very interesting because the movie says it pretty much all, which is that by now the screaming fans and the torrents of groupies are getting to them. I mean, they certainly want groupies. You can go back to Please Please and see that. But didn't quite want to have this deluge. I mean, you know, five girls at once and a huge king bed or something. I don't know. And of course, the the screaming fans that couldn't even hear themselves at the stadium. So, you know, they're, they're kind of like, what have we got ourselves into? And then the fourth album, uh, well, it says it really all is, doesn't it? I mean, 90% of the profits were going to the record company, maybe even more. Uh, so the title of that album is just Beatles for Sale. That's all it really are, is a way for these asses in the corporate establishment to make money and they don't give a crap about us or anybody else um so that led to a change of philosophy or led to the beginning of one because they had one more album uh before this change and that was called help that's right it was also a movie but it was it says it on the album called help i have to get out of here you know and so what happened was then came the next album rubber soul Rubber suggests pliability, movement, elasticity. It's going from one place to another place. They're going to take their fans on a journey from here to there. Um, not entirely, you know, deliberately. They're just going to go from here to there, and the fans will follow. Uh, and they'll get a new experience of meeting from that, they hope. Um, also, John Lennon supposedly was fooling around on his then-wife, Cynthia, not with Yoko Ono, that was later, um, but with some woman. And so, you know, there's a, a double entendre there to rub her soul. And it could be S-O-U, it could be S-O-L-E, rub her foot, you know, what? I, who knows? If you had a foot fetish. Anyway, so then we get to the next album. Again, the title says it all, Revolver. This is a revolution, not the song revolution, or revolution number one, or revolution number nine but a revolution in their music and their outlook on life. Because now they've taken psychedelics. Now they're going beyond pot, which was you know, their influence on some of the earlier songs. And now they've gotten into psychedelics. And, and now also they've even started getting into TM because although Tarlano Never Knows looks to be, as a song, based upon psychedelic imagery, and it is, it's also talking about transcendental meditation if you read the lyrics carefully. Um, by a year or two later, they had broken with Maharishi over essentially what seems to have been a false misunderstanding of what was going on in terms of the inner dynamics of the ashram. And it